Hi, and welcome to the Field Bag Video Sew Along. In this series of instructional videos, I'll be walking you step by step through the process of sewing up your own field bag. I know a lot of you have followed other grain line sew alongs, so you know what to expect from this series. But since the field bag is a collaboration with Fringe Supply Co., we have a lot of new people joining us this time, and I'm so excited to have you all here. With that in mind, I'm going to give you all a bit of a rundown on who I am and how this series will work. If you've been following Grainline for a while, you probably already know that I'm Jen, the owner and founder of the Grainline Studio line of sewing patterns. Prior to starting my company, I obtained a degree in pattern making and worked as a pattern maker in Chicago. After sensing a hole in the garment pattern market, in 2011, I launched my first sewing pattern, which grew into a full-time job and the company I have today. I have a passion for garment sewing and education, which combined with my formal training and work have enabled our patterns to reach a wide audience and gain loyal customers. Now for how this sew along will work. All of the videos are free and will live permanently on our YouTube channel. This means you can watch them and rewatch them when it's convenient for you. I'll be sewing the entire bag through with you over the course of six videos in this series, so you'll be able to see exactly how I handle each step of the process. If you have any questions, you can leave a comment below the video and I'll do my best to answer it. So with all of that out of the way, let's talk about the field bag. As a lot of you know, the field bag was designed by Fringe Supply Co. and quickly reached cult status in the knitting world. With good reason, I own multiples and they're really just perfect for toting my projects around with me. While the bag was designed with knitters and crocheters in mind, I've also used it to haul around hand sewing and other various small projects. Now let's talk about the design. The field bag is quite large on the inside with its roomy main compartment. You can see here I have a ball of yarn, the start of the front of a sweater, and the entire back of a sweater in here. Here I flipped my bag inside out so you can see that it has two sets of interior pockets which are designed for neatly storing your tools, patterns, and miscellany. Here the pocket is divided with spaces for pens, needles, and it has a mid-sized pocket here for tools. On the other side here there's a large single pocket which fits a folded 8.5 by 10 sheet of paper or a notebook. This is perfect for storing printed patterns and things like that. This large pocket has three grommets installed, which are meant to assist with managing multiple strands of yarn when doing color work. If you've purchased the kit from us, you will need to install these grommets as the holes are pre-punched. If you're cutting your own fabric, these are completely optional. You can see here how the weight of the fabric allows the bag to stand up on its own. It's completely empty and it still keeps its shape. The bag closes with two cotton draw cords and an angled wrist strap makes it easy to carry with you everywhere. I like to take mine on dog walks with my very, very slow beagle and I knit right out of it on my wrist. In order to create the field bag, the first thing you're going to need is the pattern. This is true whether you're making it from a kit that you purchased from us or with your own fabric. The pattern is available in both printed and PDF formats in our shop. You can find a link to purchase it if you haven't already in the description below the video. We'll discuss working with the pattern and assembling a PDF in our next lesson in case you're unfamiliar with that process. In order for your field bag to stand up on its own the way the original bags did, we recommend using cotton canvas with a weight of between 8 to 10 ounces. This field bag here was made from one of our pre-cut field bag fabric and notions kits. This kit's 10 ounce 100% cotton duck canvas is the same fabric that was used for the production of the pre-made field bags. It features a water repellent finish and has been pre-cut and drilled by the factory that produced the original field bags. This is a great choice if you're just starting out sewing or feeling nervous about selecting the proper fabric for your bag. So this bag here that I was showing you before 
is one of the original field bags. It was a gift from Karen during the very first production run back in 2014. This is my most used field bag, and you can see how well it stood up over time. It's been to Chicago parks, northern Wisconsin woods, Australian beaches, cars, boats, airplanes, and it still basically looks like new. It stands up great, it functions perfectly, and a lot of that has to do with the amazing fabric that was used for this. So again, this is made of the same fabric, looks great, stands up on its own. This is the 10 ounce canvas. So here you can see a field bag that we made up in eight ounce canvas. This is pretty rigid, not as rigid as the original fabric. Um, and it does stand up due to the areas uh, with the pockets where the fabric is in multiple layers that adds enough structure for it to stand. So it will function pretty well and you can make it stand up, but over time it will start kind of collapsing. So this is eight ounce canvas. You can use a six ounce canvas. A lot of the canvases that fabric companies produce, um, a lot of quilting cotton fabric companies um, like Free Spirit, Ruby Star, Robert Kaufman, all of them, they produce a canvas that's usually around six ounces. So it will not be as sturdy as this. It'll kind of collapse again in the areas where it doesn't have the pockets adding reinforcement, but you'll still be able to use it. Any lighter than six ounces, it's just gonna collapse. So if you wanna to try to use quilting cotton, that's not gonna stand up at all. So you wanna kind of stay eight to 10. If you really wanna do a nice fun print, six is fine. Just don't expect it to stand up quite as well. The strap of the original field bag was natural tanned leather, and this strap will weather and soften with use and age as it reacts with the oil on your hands. So here you can see, this is a strap from 2014. It is very flexible. It's a completely different color from this strap. This is a lot more rigid. But when this arrived to my house back in 2014, it looked exactly like this. So over time, the handle will soften and end up looking like this. Another option for this strap is using one inch wide cotton webbing. If you've purchased a fabric or notions kit from us, you're all set with straps. You either chose a leather or a cotton strap. This strap that we're offering in our kits is really nice quality. It's a little heavier duty than what you find at Joanne Fabrics. Um, so that's available on our website if you want one. This is great for vegans or people who just don't like a leather strap. But no matter what you use, it'll need to be one inch wide by 12 inches long. The top of the field bag closes with two lengths of braided cotton cording that's cinched to keep your project from falling out. It can also be difficult to source this braid in small quantities through the regular home sewing channels. So we're excited to offer it to you via our fabric and notions kits. Um, a lot of times it's not quite as sturdy as this. It sort of has a, um, I wanna say like a fiber fill filling. This is 100% cotton rope. There's nothing inside of it but rope. So it's really gonna stand up to wear and tear. And you're gonna have a lot of that cinching this over and over. It's a lot of friction on the rope. So you wanna make sure it's as solid as possible. As I mentioned previously, inside the original field bag, the largest pocket has three grommets. Again, these were designed to manage multiple strands of yarn and keep them from becoming tangled as you knit. If you purchased a field bag fabric kit from us, the grommet holes are already punched and you will need to set the grommets to finish the edges of the punched holes. If you're making a bag from your own fabric, whether or not you decide to install the grommets is completely up to you. The original field bag called for three 5 sixteenths of an inch, which is eight millimeter grommets. So that's what you wanna look for if you're purchasing those on your own. You'll need three of them and then any extra that you wanna practice with. Again, these can be hard to source. A lot of times they have a really large lip, unlike the smaller lip, um, and you'll often be ordering them in packs of 100. So if you just want a few, we have those for sale on our website. Now, as far as pins, pretty much any pins you have laying around are going to work just fine. 
as long as they're an appropriate size for your fabric. Keep in mind this fabric is thick, so you want your pins to not be too flimsy. I will be using extra long satin pins for mine. They are thick enough that they go through the canvas no problem and long enough um, that they're easy to pull out when I'm sewing. So just keep that in mind. For our field bags, we use 100% polyester all-purpose thread in a color that matches your fabric. We tested a heavier thread and found that it was difficult for all the machines to create a stitch that's even on the front and back. As you can see here, due to the way the pockets are stitched onto the bag, the bobbin thread will show on the outside of your bag. So you wanna make sure whatever thread you're using ends up producing a nice even stitch with your machine. So definitely test that first. Despite there being leather in the field bag, we recommend that you use a denim machine needle to construct your bag. This needle is heavy duty enough to sew through the leather strap and the thickest parts of the bag. A leather needle is sharp, sharp enough to cut the leather that it's sewing. Since unlike with fabric, there are no threads for the needle to pass between. Because of this, if you use a leather needle to sew the canvas of your bag, it can cut the threads rather than pass between them. This can result in a situation where you start to create a small hole that begins to fray as you use your bag. I like to use my quarter inch foot, which Bernina calls the patchwork foot, because of the accuracy it provides, but I recommend using whatever you're used to for the bulk of your project. There are a few seams where I find my edge stitching foot helpful. An edge stitch foot has a guide down the center of the foot that aligns with the edge of your fabric and helps you stitch a consistent distance from your edge. I'm personally not much of a rotary person, but these are the scissors I find most useful for almost every project I make. My Ginger bent handle shears. I use these to cut out my fabric, snip, clip, and more. I use embroidery scissors to grade any seam allowances. Thread snips live next to my machines at all times. I couldn't sew without them. If you're most comfortable with a rotary cutter, you'll need one of those and a fresh blade to cut through the fabric since it's quite thick for this project. Having an 18 inch gridded ruler or measuring tape handy is often helpful when laying out your pattern pieces and making sure that pockets are square. You may also want a seam gauge for pressing under hems. You'll need a marking tool of some kind to trace out your pattern onto fabric. To trace the outside of the bag, you can use anything that doesn't bleed. My favorite marking tool is actually a black wing pencil. Since you're cutting off the trace line when you cut, it doesn't matter if it comes out or not. To mark the interior pocket placement and stitching lines, you will want to use something that is not permanent. I like to use a chalk pencil. They have a fine lead that comes in multiple colors and they're washable. You can also use something like a clover choco liner, but just keep in mind that the colored chalk on these is not washable. You'll also need an iron and an ironing board. I'll be using my Laura Star Smart Eye Ironing System. I really love how light this iron is, and also I love the active board that pulls the steam through whatever you're pressing. Any iron and ironing board you have will be just great, you simply need something to press on and with. If you're setting grommets, you'll need the tools to do so. You will need a corresponding 5 16 inch 8 mm punch to cut the holes and a 5 16 inch or 8 mm grommet setter to secure them in place. If you're working with a different size grommet, make sure you purchase a punch and setter in the same size as the grommet. Okay, so that's it for day one of the Field Bag Sew Along. I hope you found that information useful and you're just as excited as I am to sew up your own field bag. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. Our next lesson will focus on assembling and working with your pattern. I know we have a lot of newer sewers following along, so I wanted to make sure to cover this. 
You can subscribe to our channel via the link below to make sure you don't miss any of our upcoming videos, and I'll see you back here next time. Bye-bye.